Hi everybody, it's Elisa here. And today I have a haul that I'm going to show you that I've been gathering over several weeks. First, I'm going to show you some things I got from King Art Art Supplies. And the first thing I got were these dot and fine line twin tip markers. And these I bought for my Hobonichi Weeks planner. It's a set of 12 and, they, and it's just in basic colors. They also have a metallic set but I just got the basic colors and I got these because I wanted to use I wanted to on my to-do list make little dots by them you can see that that one's kind of dark and then you can have lines I don't really use this side too much and then some of the colors are really light, almost too light, and then some are too dark, but most of them are good. I would say there's only a couple that are too light and then a couple that are too dark. And it just depends on the pressure that you put on them. That determines how big or small the dot is. And so I just make my to-do list in my Hobonichi and then put the dots by it and so that I can check them off later. It just makes it kind of fun. I just kind of do that with my pen. So I got those from King Art. Then I also from King Art got the gel sticks. And I got the 72 pack because it was on a really good sale over Christmas. I think right now, I think it's about $60. But when I bought them, they were $36. And I have another type of gel stick like this. I have the Marabou, which those are around $5 a stick. And I think these are just as good. So I'm excited to try those. I got... I kind of rearranged the colors the way that I want to use them. So I got these and these and these. And then this set, I think these are all the metallics. I'll probably use those the least, but it was included in the kit, so that was fine. So the next thing I got was a Sticky Club sticker subscription and you get stickers every month and it comes in with this cool organization binder envelope thing. I don't know what you call that. And you get seven sticker sheets and three stationary items. This is a little book called The Language of Flowers with these large rectangle stickers i wasn't sure if they were just papers or stickers but they are stickers let me know in the comments what you would use these for i'm not exactly sure what to use these for i did start using stickers in my hobonichi planner i i'm not really doing themes on the weekly pages but i did find it fun to just kind of stick down stickers that i thought were cute when I was a little girl, I loved collecting stickers and putting them in sticker books and scratch and sniff stickers and all of that. Although the, the scratch and sniff ones, I barely wanted to scratch because I didn't want them to, it, well, I didn't want the scratches to ruin the images. Anyway, I chose the vintage pack from Sticky Club. There are three themes. You can get uh, vintage, uh, cute, or pop. And I just kind of like the colors in the vintage ones, so that's why I chose those. But they do have, by a certain time of every month, you can change your selection to one of the other packs in case you like those stickers better. But I think I'll probably just stick with the vintage for a while um, until I get bored. And then this was January's month. What? <laughs> I mean, January's selection. <laughs> And it's all flowers, which I found interesting because here there's definitely no flowers. But maybe that was their idea was to cheer people up for dreadful winter time. These stickers here are kind of cool. I think this might be 
one of the stationary pieces because it's a matte finish and you could write on them. And then this here I got from St. Louis Art Supply. It's the Schmincke Retro Watercolor Palette. And it's just an old version. Well, yeah, I guess it's the old historical colors and um, logo and font. And it's in one of these small whiskey painter style palette boxes, which I've always wanted. And they're really expensive. I've only kind of found them on Etsy. And they're usually about $80 without paint. And so when I saw that Schmincke had this one, which included eight colors, I thought, eh, I might as well get that one. That's a better deal. And I kind of have an addiction to collecting small watercolor palettes. They're just so cute. And here they're including a swatch card, which I love when companies do that. I will swatch this palette a little bit later in this video. And they included um, a little thank you note. You pull out those bars there to get the pans out, but I do that off camera so that it isn't torturous to watch. And then there's the metal ring on the back, which I actually have never used on my palettes. Um, I don't know if I've seen anyone use those really. And they gave me another, oh, here I'm just showing the packing paper. I'm going to save that because I like the color and I'm going to use it for collage. They gave me another ruler, another sticker, and a stamp thanking me. I love it when companies add a little personal touch like that. It's such an easy thing to do, but makes a big difference. And then at Walmart, I found that they had a few packs of Tombow dual brush pens. And I got this portrait pack because I want to start practicing portraits and figures. And then, oh, this was also from St. Louis Art Supply. It's the M Kurataki Mica Gold Paste. I wanted to get the gold ink that I have seen Dee Dee Willingham and Janet Young on YouTube um, rave about. And they were out of stock of the ink, but they did have this paste. So I bought that. And it's kind of a cool paste. It's in a squeeze bottle. And they recommend mixing it with watercolors or other inks just to add some shine. And you really don't need to add much. That middle one there, I put the ink, the gold down first and then layered the watercolor on top. But the rest of them, I pre-mixed into the watercolor and I think it looked better. And then here, I'm just showing that I applied the paste directly just in a super thick layer but I think it'll be fun to play with. I'm not exactly sure how I will add it into pieces, but it's really pretty. So that's the Mica Gold Paste. This is another item from Walmart. I wanted some tape glue runners, and this is just the AdTech brand. It came in a four pack, and I think you can also get refills for it. And I just wanted to use that to glue down pieces of scrap paper in my planner and then for Christmas I got a couple of books for my oldest son he got me this National Audubon Society bird field guide and it has these high quality glossy pictures of birds of um, eastern region in North America he thought I would like it because I do like to draw and paint birds a lot and um so I'm really excited about this one. I also like to bird watch. I'm not very experienced in bird watching, but I think this will be really helpful. And then pretty soon here I'll show you the um, section that I thought was the most interesting. Here's just the different descriptions. Okay, here we go. This section is called the silhouette section. And I guess they recommend when you're out bird watching that you can just identify the silhouette of the bird that you um, are observing first. And then it gives you a few categories that it could be. And then the page numbers in the field guide so you can go and look at the specific details. And it's a leather-like cover. It's a really high quality book. It's small, but it's heavy. 
but I think it'll be really easy to handle. And then he also got me the Joy of Watercolor by Emma Block. And this is, um, well, 40 Happy Lessons, she said. I don't know if I'll be happy when I'm doing it, but I hope so. And then there's flowers in here, and she does have them categorized by beginner and advanced. I, th I saw an advanced one in there. I think I, I show you that later. So I'm assuming there's also intermediate ones. There's the advanced one, the fruit market. And I haven't tried any of these yet. Let me know if you want me to do a video on one of these. I'd be happy to do that. She shows you what you'll need and the colors. It's kind of an illustrative style. I'm not very good at illustration. Um, I find it pretty stressful to do things in a stylized way. I like to look at it, but I'm really bad at it. There's some food items. Skin tone, so it looks like she covers a lot of topics. So I'm excited to try that one, and I love that it's a hardback. Hardbacks are just easy for me, easier for me to use. And then coming up here in a minute, this book I already own, 365 Days of Art. It's been out for a long time. And it, again, is just uh, a bunch of simple prompts that you can do to warm up or just kind of relax with art without too much pre pressure. At this page I already completed with the trees and I did that one, but because I liked that one so much, she has a few versions of these books. So I got another one that I will show in a second here. I had to do a voiceover because the audio was kind of ruined. Okay, this is the new one that I got, 365 Days of Creativity. And it really looks like the same thing as the other one that I have. So it is going to take me forever to go through all of these. The paper quality is pretty much copy paper quality, but I still put watercolor on it. I don't really care if it goes through to the other side or if the page is wrinkled, but you could um, just do the prompt on your own paper if you don't want, want wrinkly pages or I really loved these eggs. I thought they were really cute. I want to try those. I don't know why I'm... I must have been talking a long time about eggs. <laughs> we're almost done with this book. Okay, and then the next item is um, something that I wanted for studying. I bought a weighted bookmark. When I'm studying and taking notes from a book... It kind of drives me crazy that I have to hold the book open with my hand and try to take notes at the same time. So this is the current book that I'm studying and I'll show you in a second how the weighted bookmark works. You probably can figure it out, but so anyway, you just slap it on there and it holds the book open. It's really cool. I probably could have just used like a, a dumbbell or something, but um, I don't know, this is made specifically for books, and so I thought I would get one, and I really like it so far. I might have to get a couple more when I'm trying to take notes from more than one book. So I got that from walmart.com, but I think you can get them everywhere. And then I bought The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the prequel to The Hunger Games. I have read the original trilogy and I've seen those movies but I wanted to read this book before I saw the new movie so let me know if you guys have read this book or if you've seen the movie and now I'm gonna swatch the uh, Schmincke watercolor palette using my B paper again so I unwrapped those off camera because it's takes me forever to do it and I am pre-wetting the watercolor. So 
So the first color is Viridian. That one was probably the hardest to re-wet. And then the next one is Ultramarine Finest. And then Vermilion. And then Chrome Yellow Hue Lemon. Payne's Gray, which is more neutral than the other Payne's, Grays, Payne's Gray that I own. And then English Venetian Red. That's a pretty opaque color. And then Raw Umber. and yellow raw ochre. I like all these colors. I kind of wish they would have included a cool red, but that's okay. I, I tend to not use super bright colors anyway, so I'm pretty happy with the selection they put in here, and obviously I can change the colors out if I want to. But mostly, I'm just really excited about having a limited edition palette. It's probably one of the well, no, my other limited edition palette was the Art Toolkit one they put out over the holidays. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. Bye!